Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking all about early ice presentations that will help you catch more fish. I actually have Brad Hawthorne right there behind the camera. He's going to jump over here. He's going to share a few presentations. I'm going to share a few presentations. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Presentation number uno. Okay, that's gonna be my spoon fishing setup. Many of you guys don't know, the Buckshot Spoon has caught more fish in the ice season than any other spoon ever made by millions of fish. Okay, my spoon setup, this is a Northland. Quick clip right here, that goes to my spoon. That is so I can make quick changes with color or size on the fly. Simply, I can snap them on and off in less than a second, and I'm making those changes on the run. Now on my Hummingbird Shuttle, I'm already able to carry a few rods so I can make, I can have multiple different configurations ready to go at the end of my fingertips. So keep that in mind, that quick snap is a must have. Again, to the swivel, that's a must have. I know a lot of you guys are like, Brad, I'm sick of hearing about a swivel. Then do it, put it on there and catch more fish. Come on, join the group. It's super fun over here catching more fish. Put a swivel on. Okay, the other part is rod length. Okay, rod length, I use, this is my outside, this is a 34, uh, precision power by tuned up and when I'm inside I like using 30 to 32 inches when I'm outside it's gonna be 34 to 38 even up to 42 when I'm outside so inside and outside spoon rods are a thing can you do the Swiss Army knife yeah 32 inch is kind of that Swiss Army knife length for inside and outside personally feel that that's a little short it's a little long for the inside rod and it's a little you know a little short for the outside rod but it goes by your height if you're a five foot five you know, foot tall dude, 32 might be a perfect outside rod for you. I'm 5'10", 38, 36, 38, 40 is about my perfect length for an outside rod. So keep those in mind when you're purchasing your spoon rods. Now for the line, super easy. Six pound floral across the board. Fluorocarbon has come leaps and bounds over the years. Right now I'm using Seaguar, it's a great line. It's got, you know, it disappears underwater. It's got very little stretch. You know, I, there's no reason for me to go to mono in any ice fishing setup anymore. It's, it's fluorocarbon to the end of the days and that's it. Six pound with your swivel and your quick snap. And that right there is number one. If you ice fish, you know about half to three quarters of your fish are coming while you're spoon fishing. So it pays to put a little bit of thought, time and effort into your spoon fishing setup. Presentation number two is another one to me that's just an enormous staple. You cannot miss out on this presentation and that is some sort of set line. I've got a dead stick right here. It could be a tip up, could be a tip down, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in just, about, in just a second. But just something where you have an extra line out there, just another opportunity to catch fish. So we get two lines where we're at, and it's really simple to have that active jigging line and then have a set line maybe right next to you. Maybe you draw a fish in, and then you end up sealing the deal with the set line, or maybe you have it up the break a little bit further and you're actively jigging down the break or vice versa, whatever, whatever it is, you can use it as a tool to not only tell you where the fish are, but also give you some hints on the fish's mood. Uh, there's a few different options that you have when you're running uh, set lines like this. And I'm, I'm gonna focus a little bit more on dead sticks specifically. So using a fishing rod as a set line. And what I like to do, and I know that Brad is in this same uh, category as well, is I like to use some sort of uh, device that allows the fish, when they pull on the line, to pull the rod tip down. And for me, that's all the indicator I need to see that there's a fish there. With that whole setup as well, like I like to pair it with a bait feeder type reel. But essentially, like the fish is gonna take the bait, pull the rod tip down, and start pulling line directly straight through the guides. And if you have like everything set up and you have a decent quality reel, another option, you can just loosen the drag quite a bit, but bait feeder is ideal so you're not messing with tightening the drag before setting the hook. Um, if you have a decent enough root of a decent enough reel setup, um, the walleye is just gonna take your bait and it's gonna go and it's not gonna even know you're there. Um, so that is the rod side, that is the reel side. On the line side of things, for the most part, I would just use like six pound fluorocarbon roughly. More often than not, I'm just running like a plain hook right there on the bottom on the business end and that might be like, typically it's like a number two or a number four and for me, more often than not, when I'm looking at hook size, uh, it's just gonna be a matter of 
which minnows am I using? Like if it's a four inch, you know, that's kind of like the line where I might use like a number four or a number two. Another consideration as well is, uh, you know, how tough is the bite? Like if the bite is really tough, you're definitely gonna benefit from just continuing to downsize until you start to get some bites. So that's something to consider. The single hook option is great. Treble hooks are also great. And uh, you know, that's just something to play around with too. If you're getting bites and then setting the hook and ripping the hook out of their mouth, you know, something you might play with is, is the single hook versus the treble. A split shot, you know, probably like one foot, foot and a half, something like that above the hook is typically gonna be my setup just to get that minnow down to the bottom. Another thing you can use is like a little like jig. So like a single hooked spoon kind of deal. Um, and that can be a really great, great thing as well. But it's, uh, it's one of those deals where there's like a million things to talk about and I can't cover it all in this video because it looks like we're up to five minutes. You guys are getting a lot of info on uh, some early ice presentations. So I can't really cover it all. Um, what else can I talk about? A swivel is important as well real quick. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much the whole rundown. If you want more information, I can promise you, you can find more good information here on YouTube. I know that I've done like, you know, 15 minute videos just talking about my dead stick setup. So there's a lot more to it. Uh, definitely have a dead stick deployed. But now we're gonna get on to presentation number three. Hey guys, number three. Now this number three is the real number three. The one that you watch these videos and hope for that one thing that you can take away that you haven't heard before, this might be that one. So you have spoon rod, spoon jigging, but now we have it jigging, just jigs, not spoons, they're jigs, okay? And this is a technique that I've developed over the last 20 years where a lot of people don't realize that the jigs we use, like for instance, forage minnow jig, I use that so much in the winter for when the fish just are a little bit neutral. Spoon fishing is, you know, it's not getting that many bites. And a lot of times just going to a jig and that's just a jig with a fixed hook the hook is molded into the jig has a lot different action it doesn't make as much noise it's got a little bit of flash and it's a subtler jigging action and it catches fish matter of fact nick came out with me a few years ago and we were we did a video on basically jig fishing with the forge minnow jig and he was like this is great and was like added a size and color run to his box and saw how effective it was. And this is a technique that I've been using with my customers for years and largely, largely successful. So the rod setup is the same as your spoon setup. The only difference is, is I typically shorten my length between my swivel and my jig to about a foot. And the reason is, is because my jig, and that could be your forage minnow, like this is a forage minnow spoon right here, or a forage minnow jig, or an RZ jig or a fireball jig or anything like that. This goes on your setup. And the reason why this distance I've shortened it is because this spoon lays on the bottom about 50% of the time. So because of that, I'm still using mainline six, but I'm going up to my tip line. I'm going to six or eight pound on that end of it just because that line is always on the bottom. So my jigging technique is on the bottom, I'm making that noise and, 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 and contact with the bottom and I'm lifting up. And when I'm lifting up, I'm lifting up really slow because a lot of times there's a walleye sitting there, that's a lot of times when they'll hit. So having your set line spoon rod or your finesse spoon rod, whatever you wanna call it, that is your number three. Now keep track of that. You have your spoon rod, you have your dead stick, and now you have your jig stick. All three of those, if you're a walleye angler, you know that you don't hop out on the ice without your trusty spoon rod, your jig rod, and your deadline rod. So, you're wondering why a lot of good ice anglers have six or eight rods in their case and they're going through them all the time? That's why. Presentation number four is something that's a little bit more aggressive. And this right here, you've seen it before, the old horizontal glide bait, got the puppet minnow right here and this is absolutely killer on early ice and especially this time of year just because the fish are a little bit more active we haven't hit the doldrums of midwinter yet and uh, something that's a little bit more aggressive can sometimes be the absolute ticket and uh, this is just picture perfect it works great in clear water kind of moderate water and i've caught them in dirty water fishing situations as well despite the fact that it doesn't have rattles or anything like that it just moves a lot of water and yeah this is a really really simple deal like what i'll do is i'll drop it down to the bottom and then i'll just give it like a rip 
and you don't have to get way too sinking wild and aggressive with it. I've seen people do like wild rips and all this crazy stuff. And uh, that's sort of how you fish this bait kind of during the summer, fall period. Um, but once you're in winter, like I'm just moving my rod tip about like a foot or so, just enough to get that bait to shoot out to the left, shoot out to the right, and then kind of pendulum back down to center. And for me, that's usually when the fish comes and cracks it. I give it a couple, couple rips. And if you're marking a fish down there, one thing that's important is the ripping action is amazing for calling fish in from a distance. And that's that's really where this bait kind of is key, is calling fish in. Maybe you're fishing like, you know, a big giant main lake uh, point or something like that, or you're on a flat where these fish are roaming around. You know, this thing flying up, coming back down, flying, is gonna catch the fish's attention. It's gonna call them in. Um, but once those fish are underneath the hole, I like to slow down my presentation a little bit. I don't necessarily go to like straight, like, soft jigging deal, um, but I will kind of tone it down because I have watched fish walleyes on underwater camera trying to bite this thing, and when it's ripping all over the place, you'll see the walleye like turn its head this way, try and get to it, and you know, then just leave because it's too much. So what I'll do is I'll kind of just give it like pop, 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 and just kind of like make it so that head is kind of bumping up and down, and then I'll give it a, a little bit more of like a tone back pop to kind of just shoot it this way just to keep if the fish is active and they came in and looked at it um, just to keep them a little bit interested but uh, at uh, the risk of getting too long I'm going to share a few more details on this so for me what I like is a rod that has a really fast action and what that means is the break of the rod is a lot closer to the tip so this one breaks about right here um, and as, as you may or may not be able to see like it bends really quickly, but it's down towards the end of the rod. But then it also has like a really good backbone, so you can set the hook really good. This is a heavy bait, and uh, it's got a lot of hooks and a lot of stuff going on, so you really need to have like a good uh, hook set to drive the hook into the fish's mouth. Um, but yeah, aside from that, like I'm usually using like six pound fluorocarbon. The swivel, if there's any presentation where you need a swivel, it's this presentation. Cause this thing is just like jumping around in circles underneath you. Um, and you'll have so much line twist if you don't have a swivel. So swivels are important. Another thing I would say is also important is uh, I don't like to run like any like quick changing snaps or even like normal snaps with this bait because it's jumping around so much, like so much could go wrong with extra hardware. So I like to tie direct. Um, it's kind of a pain in the butt to do a Palomar knot, but if you can do a Palomar knot, that's just the deal. Um, so anyway, that is presentation number four. You need to have something a little bit more aggressive on early ice, just ready, because sometimes you see a fish down there, maybe you're jigging a spoon and it won't go. You pick up this thing, you can get it down there in three seconds, snap, snap, and next thing you know, your rod's bent over. Those are your top four techniques for putting walleyes on the ice during early ice. If you employ any of these techniques this winter, you are, for a fact, gonna catch more walleyes. So, if you like this video and many more to come, be sure to hit that little red subscribe button at the bottom to see more videos like this.